I'd like to welcome you to the annual general meeting of the Chartered Insurance Institute. It is now just past 11.30 and as we have a quorum, I now declare the meeting open. Before I start, I'd like to explain that I will be chairing today's meeting in place of our president, Jonathan Clark. Jonathan is unwell and regrets that he is unable to attend today. We wish Jonathan a speedy recovery. I would now like to mention a few housekeeping points. Firstly, please make sure that your phones are off or switched to silent mode. I would also like to inform you that the meeting today is being video recorded so that members who cannot be present can view it on the CII's website. I will now introduce the board members and the company secretary who are on the platform. So to my left, we have Sean Fisher, a Chief Executive Officer. To my right, John Bissell, uh, Chief Operating Officer. And to my right, Caroline Lace, Company Secretary. Apologies have been received from a number of officers and former officers who are unable to attend the AGM. A list of those people we provided in the minutes. Loyal greetings were sent to our patron, Her Majesty the Queen, on behalf of the officers and members of the Institute. And in return, she has sent her good wishes for the most successful and enjoyable program. You each have been provided with a copy of the agenda and notice for the meeting, so you can follow proceedings along with a copy of our annual report. There are packs on each table which contain copies of the information you will be voting on and which have all been made available to you previously. The minutes of the 2018 AGM held on the 18th of July 2018 have been available on the website and a copy is on the table. As no comments have been received since these were published, with the consent of the meeting, I will sign these as a true and correct record of the proceedings. Do I have your consent? I'll take, take that as a yes, I hope. Yes, thank you very much. That's tremendous. So thank you. Moving on to the voting proceedings. Um, those of you who are eligible to, eligible to vote this morning at this meeting should have received a handheld voting device. And the instructions are included in the AGM pack on your table. Please raise your hand if you've not received a device. That's good. Uh, we would really like to use handheld devices so that the voting procedure is quicker, so that you can see the results of the votes on the screen behind me, which will be combined with the votes previously received, and so that you have an opportunity to vote anonymously. Um, we do need to seek your consent to vote using the handheld devices, and so we would like to trial the devices with a test question first before we ask for your consent. Um, unfortunately, if even one person in this room uh, does not give consent, we'll need to revert to using voting cards, which will be more time consuming, and I have uh, a very large pack to read in that eventuality. So it would be tremendous if we could really make an effort to get comfortable with the, electro <laughs> with the electronic devices, please. Certainly, I've definitely rehearsed that you all say yes to that. So that would be tremendous. Um, so please look at your devices. In order to cast your vote for a resolution, when asked to do so, you should press buttons 1A to vote for the motion, 2B to vote against the motion, or 3C to abstain. Your devices will register the last option selected at the point the voting closes. The device will display green to indicate a vote has been registered. Uh, we would like to use a test question to familiarize you with the devices and to ensure everything is working. Uh, please do not vote until instructed to do so. But the test question is on the screen. <laughs> we, this is... We like to start with the tough ones, uh, uh, and that, that question is, are you in York today? So please use the devices and press the button firmly. Let's hope for a positive result. <laughs> are we there? We think, should we have a look and see what the results are? <laughs> 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 well, 
I, I was going to say well done to most of you. I, I, <laughs> I think that's probably the appropriate thing to say. So um, thank you. So now that we have those votes in, we've had an opportunity to test it. First of all, I should test, are there any objections to us using the handheld devices to progress the voting processes? I think I'm going to take that as everybody's happy. So thank you very much for that. So moving on to the official business on the agenda, if anyone wants to contribute to any item, please raise your hand at the point at which I ask for questions and then wait to be handed a microphone and please give your name. Each resolution will be shown on the screen. So let's start. Agenda item A, annual report and accounts. The annual report and accounts for the year ended 31st of December 2018 are included in the AGM pack. An abstract of the accounts was circulated with the last issue of the journal and the personal finance professional, and the full accounts have been available on the CII website, the ERS voting webpage, and from the corporate governance team on request. Are there any questions or comments on the report and accounts? Okay, no questions. Thank you. I will now put the motion to the meeting that the annual report and accounts of the Institute for the year ended 31st of December 2018 be received and considered. Please cast your votes now. Okay, I think everyone had a chance to vote. So let's see. Uh, what the results are. So with the full votes from uh, that were previously collected, um, I declare the motion carried. Agenda item B, results of the election of members to the representative council and appointments made to the CII board. As those of you attending the network conference will be aware, Representative Council was dissolved in December and replaced by the Local Institute National Forum. In addition, there were no vacancies for Representative Council members on the board this year. This means that there are no votes to be made against this agenda item, and we can move on to agenda item C. And agenda item C is the election of fellows and associates. Under item C, the Chief Executive will announce the number of elections to fellowship and associateship. Sean. In 2018, there were 429 members elected to fellowship and 1,034 members elected to associateship. Thank you, Sean. On behalf of the Institute, I warmly congratulate all those newly elected. On to agenda item D, election of the president and the deputy president for 2019 and 20. Sean, can I also ask uh, you to propose the next resolution, please? Indeed. Uh, it is now my duty and pleasure to propose the election of Nick Turner, APFS, as the president for the Institute year 2019 to 20. Nick joined the NFU Mutual Board in 2013 and is primarily responsible for the group's agency network, distribution and sales for general insurance and the subsidiaries. He is also chairman of MSIL, the subsidiary responsible for the provision of NFU Mutual's financial advice, pensions, investment and protection propositions. Nick has a long association with the CII and has sat on the PFS board for five years, as well as being PFS president in 2016-17. Before joining NFU Mutual, Nick spent 27 years at AXA in a wide variety of sales and business development, marketing and strategy roles acro across life, general insurance and global partnerships. If elected, Nick will be the CII's first president for the financial planning sector. His experience both in his career and as a past president of PFS have made his contribution to the CII board over the past year invaluable. I therefore with pleasure propose that Nick Turner APFS 
be elected president of the Institute for the year 2019-20. Please cast your votes now. Looks like everybody has finished voting. The results are shown on the screen. I declare the motion carried. Congratulations, Nick. Thank you, Sean, and thank you to everybody. Thank you. I, I am honoured to be elected president of the Institute and look forward to taking up the challenges of this historic and important office. Sean. Uh, and just uh, for a, a pleasurable transfer, the President's transfer of office, as we refer to it, uh, will take place immediately after the formal business of the AGM. And uh, I think you can see the, the stage already set up there uh, to, to my right. So on to uh, other business, election of the new Deputy President. Uh, I now propose the election of Julie Page, ACII, Chartered Insurance Practitioner, as the Deputy President of the Institute for the year 2019 and 20. Unfortunately, Julie is unable to be with us today due to a prior business commitment in New York. However, I would like to advise that Julie Page is currently Chief Executive Officer of Aon UK uh, Limited and is responsible for the strategic management, statutory and governance oversight of the Aon UK business, delivering on the firm's global vision, financial goals and statutory and regulatory agenda. She also leads the Aon team in the UK who provide a range of risk insurance, health and benefit services to clients. Julie has over 30 years experience in the insurance broking sector and has been involved in leading businesses for all segments of the insurance market. Julie is Deputy Chair for the British Insurance Brokers Association and has recently been appointed to the FCA's practitioner panel. Julie is also an industry champion for diversity and inclusion her wealth of experience will be hugely beneficial to both the CI Deputy President and CI Board Member roles. So I propose that Julie Page, ACII, Chartered Insurance Practitioner, be elected Deputy President of the Institute for the year 2019 and 20. Please cast your vote now. Hopefully we've all done. Let's see what the results are. I declare the motion carried. Congratulations to Julie. So on to agenda item E part one, proposed reappointments of vice presidents for 2019 and 20. Moving on to the next item, I have pleasure in proposing the reappointments of the Institute's Vice Presidents. The meeting will vote individually for, uh, the meeting will vote individually for each reappointment. I propose that Claire Brand, ACII, Chartered Insurance Practitioner, be reappointed as Vice President. Please cast your votes now. Okay, uh, we have all the, all, the, all the votes in. Let's see the results. Uh, I declare the motion carried. Congratulations to Claire. I now propose that Grant Scott, ACII, Chartered Insurance Broker, be reappointed as Vice President. Please cast your votes now. We have all the votes in, let's see the results. Congratulations to Grant, I declare the motion carried. Congratulations Grant. <laughs> For our final Vice President vote, I propose that Helen Wilcox, DIP CII, be reappointed as Vice President. Once again, please cast your vote now. All the votes are in. Uh, thank you for that. Let's see the results. 
Well, so congratulations to Helen. I declare the motion carried. <laughs> congratulations to all the vice presidents on their respective reappointments. We wish them a productive and enjoyable year. On to agenda item E part two, appointment of CII board members made since the conclusion of the last annual general meeting. I would now like to ask the meeting to ratify the appointment to the board made since the conclusion of the last AGM. I propose that Roger Sanders appointment as board member be ratified. Roger was appointed to the board during the latter half of 2018 and is also the chair of the audit and risk committee. He has been instrumental in ensuring that the CII board fully understands and takes account of the risks to the business and develops appropriate internal control systems. So please cast your vote now. Thank you, all the votes are in. Let's see the results. Fantastic, I declare the motion carried. Congratulations, Roger. On to agenda item F, reappointment of BDO LLP as auditors. I propose that BDO LLP be reappointed as the Institute's auditors for the year ending 31st of December 2019 and its remuneration be fixed by the board as it sees fit. So before we vote on that, first of all, are there any questions or comments on this item? Okay, everyone seems content, in which case, uh, please cast your votes on this now. Thank you, all your votes are in. The results are, I therefore declare this motion carried. On to agenda item G, rates of ordinary grant contributions to local institutes. I now invite the Chief Operating Officer, John Bissell, to provide the background for this item. John. Thank you, Nick. The Board has agreed the basis of ordinary grants for local institutes based on the criteria agreed at previous AGMs. The essence of the motion is that the ordinary grants to local institutes will total up to 14% of the aggregate subscriptions for local institutes, uh, the institute's membership, and will be allocated to each institute through measurement against an agreed set of performance criteria. No local institute will receive a grant of less than £1,000. At the board's discretion, a special grant may be awarded to institutes upon application. For special requirements, provided payment of a special grant is justified by a budget produced by the institute concerned and the purpose proposed further the objects of the CII. Any grants paid are subject to such payments not increasing the reasonable working capital of that institute. Thank you, John. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, so therefore I propose that the rate of the annual ordinary grant contributions to local institutes be agreed in accordance with the provisions of Appendix A as set out in the AGM notice. Please cast your votes now. Thank you, we have the votes in, let's see the results. I declare the motion carried, thank you. We will now move to the special business of the AGM. I hope you're all aware from the webinars which all members were invited to, the article in the journal and the various emails that have been circulated both from the CII and ERS, our online voting partner, that the CII is asking you to vote on proposals to change the bylaws today. These changes will enable the CII's governance arrangements to be modernised and for a new chartered title to be introduced. There are many changes which you have already had the opportunity to familiarise yourself with. I don't intend to go through them today as there is insufficient time. However, I want to ensure that you know that the CII board has looked at these arrangements in detail and fully supports these recommendations. The changes to the board in particular 
will both improve the governance and accountability of the CII and the new engagement board member roles will make the board more accessible to all of our members. The new chartered insurance underwriting agent title, which is proposed, will ensure the managing general agent community in our membership have a chartered title which is fit for purpose and accurately describes their role. There are over 140 amendments. We cannot vote on each amendment individually. Therefore, we have divided the changes into six themes and you will have the opportunity to vote on each theme today. There is a table of amendments for each theme which has been made available to you. And where the resolutions refer to amendment tables, you are being asked to vote on all of the amendments in the table. In the interest of time, I don't intend to ask for questions before each resolution to change the bylaws, so I would like to take all questions now. Does anyone have any questions on any of the proposed amendments? Okay, thank you, Liz. No questions uh, to be asked, that's fantastic. So in proposing these changes, I would like to clarify that as the Privy Council will need to approve the amendments, the resolutions are subject to such minor changes as they may require and which are agreed by the board. So agenda item H1. I propose that the bylaws of the Institute be amended in accordance with Table 1, General Amendments and Clarifications. Please cast your votes now. <coughs> Thank you. Let's have a look at the results. I declare the motion carried. Agenda item H part two. I propose that the bylaws of the Institute be amended in accordance with table two, modernizing the board. Please cast your votes now. Thank you again. Let's have a look at the results. I declare the motion carried. Agenda item H part three. I propose that the bylaws of the Institute be amended in accordance with table three, modernizing general meetings. Please cast your votes now. I declare the motion Carried. Oh. Subject to the results. <laughs> uh, uh, never happened in rehearsal. <laughs> I, I was just hopeful. So agenda item H4. I propose that the bylaws of the Institute be amended in accordance with Table 4, rationalising associated and affiliated institutes. Please cast your votes now. Thank you. Let's have a look at the results. I declare the motion carried. Agenda item H5. I propose that the bylaws of the Institute be amended in accordance with Table 5, Introduction of Chartered Insurance Underwriting Agent. Please cast your votes now. Thank you. The results. I declare the motion carried. Agenda item H6. I propose that the bylaws of the Institute be amended in accordance with Table 6, Qualifications for Fellows and Associates. Please cast your votes now. Thank you. And the results are, I declare the motion carried. Thank you for all your support today and for helping to ensure that the CI has the governance arrangements to meet the challenges of the future. After the meeting, please ensure you return the voting devices to the staff collecting them or you may leave them on the table for collection. 
So now we move on to agenda item I, which is the report by the Chief Executive Officer. So I now have pleasure in inviting the Chief Executive, Sean Fisher, to deliver her report. Sean, over to you. Thank you, Nick. That's always such a nerve-wracking walk all the way across the stage, isn't it? So, friends and colleagues, welcome to beautiful York, and it is beautiful, I think we'll all agree, and home of the wonderful York Institute. Uh, and also, welcome to my annual roundup and review of all things Chartered Insurance Institute in 2018. Uh, and the publication of our 2018 report and accounts. Uh, just for clarification, this is the real me uh, in our digital age. Uh, but you can also access the virtual me uh, on our online site, along with the online version of our annual report. Um, and AGM is always necessarily brief, uh, and that's why we have the online site, because we are able to go into more detail online. I would just like to offer thanks to Caroline Lace and the corporate governance team, uh, Martin Wells and the events team, and also our new communications director, Emma Hughes, and her team for making all of the uh, event happen. So, as the title of my presentation suggests, having launched our manifesto in 2016, uh, we are now fully engaged in delivering on our commitments, what you might call turning strategy into action, um, and particularly in relation to our vital stakeholders, you, all of you, uh, our members. So why focus on you? Because as our charter says and our, and our manifesto reiterated, we exist to build public trust in a united profession. But let's be real. We can only do that in conjunction with all of you committed to the benefits we can all bring to our customers and to wider society. I think our strap line sums it up. Standards drive professionalism, and being professional builds trust. And trust isn't an airy-fairy concept. It can be built, and it can be measured in a systematic way. In 2018, we launched our Trust Index in conjunction with the Institute of Customer Service. And the purpose of that is so that we can all see where the profession is performing well in the eyes of our consumers, and there are many areas, but also importantly, where it needs to improve. And I just wanted to say great work by Matt Connell, our policy director. This research has been important to us as, a, as the CII in another way. It really highlighted the vital connection of our ability to have a real voice and influence with the level of trust in us as your professional body from our members, our customers, and also from our own staff. So we will be measuring and reporting on these things too. Frankly, our early scores highlight some work to do, but there's already improvement on 2017. As they say, what gets measured gets done. So we'll know if you're feeling the benefit, as they say, in two major ways. From the absolute number of members, clearly. And on this, we did two main things in 2018. We launched two new societies for broking and claims. The object of that to expand into insurance the success we've had with building membership in our personal finance society in the financial planning sector and hats off to Mark Hutchinson and Matt Hall for the launch of the societies. Internationally, we started a program to re-engage with our 38 international affiliated institutes, and that has just resulted in them all contributing to an initial showcase report. 
and we owe a big thank you to Lauren Smith for that. We also re-energised our own offices with a new international director, David Thompson, a new regional head in Asia, Kenny Hsu, and a new regional head in the Middle East, Gaynor Jones. We also opened our office in Dubai. On the back of this work, we have already regained lost membership in Hong Kong, and we are welcoming new members in UAE and soon to be Saudi. So numbers matter, but so vitally does the level of engagement. Our societies have a dual benefit because we all engage best with what we see as most relevant to us. But we also have our important chartered designations for individuals and our corporate chartered firms. After 10 years, we needed to revisit everything to do with chartered, and that work recently completed. The new chartered ethos has been welcomed, I might even say joyously, and how often does one get to say that in insurance? So congratulations to Melissa for a project well landed through a real team effort. Chartered is a serious public declaration of commitment, which rightly gets recognition. But we will do more to overtly promote the worth and value of being chartered, both in our sector and with the public. So in our manifesto, we also committed to internal as well as external transformation. Our governance structure was highlighted as an area needing to be more relevant, modern and diverse. It has taken work and dedication to finalise our proposals. So credit to both Rowan and Caroline on this. And frankly, I'm very grateful to you as our members for approving the motions this morning. We have also been actioning our internal modernization and diversity. Clearly, the biggest action was moving from our heritage building to our new offices in Lombard Street. A few other examples, our agile working delivery and huge credit there to Andy Shilton and our internal IT team. Our work on our gender pay gap and our first proper benchmarking by Stonewall. Thanks to the hard work of all our staff and Tally and the people engagement team, we're very proud that we also retained our investors in people gold standard. Why does all this matter externally? It matters because as a professional body, we have to have credibility to provide guidance and to share good practice with our members and our wider sector. So well and good, but what has that resulted in for us as a business in 2018? So firstly, we increased our revenue to 43.2 million. And after all costs, we, need, we made an increased surplus of 1.1 million. There are two other numbers to highlight inside this result. Our investment in our modernization program and the effects of selling the Aldermanbury building. So that we can continue to monitor our underlying financial position while we're investing in change, we show a business as usual result before our all-inclusive surplus. And we're pleased to report that business as usual is showing an increased margin of 2.8 million. We invested three million pounds in our modernization program in 2018. This was predominantly in our staff and our office IT kit and our digital first project to start automating our key business processes. Thanks to Tony, Tony Ward particularly and his team on that. And collectively, 
these actions have been responsible for the increase in our business as usual margin. We also began our investment in our learning platform, our international offices, and the launch of the societies. And all these things are aimed at strengthening our business for the future. We sold Aldermanbury to the City of London Corporation for 21 million. This resulted in a 1.1 million gain on the book value of the asset. And we were able to therefore offset all the move and fit out costs against this gain with a result virtually net neutral to us as a business. Our first duty from the proceeds of the building is to secure the pension fund. Following our triannual valuation in September, we agreed to pay three million pounds into the fund itself and put five million pounds additionally into escrow against any new funding requirements. We also have permission from the board and cooperation from the pension trust trustees to go to the market for a commercial quote to transfer the pension fund to an insurance company. We have a number of interested parties. So when we have a firm quote, we will weigh up the final cost against the security that this would provide both for the pensioners in the fund, our first duty, and, but also for the CII itself ongoing. We have agreed, to use the, uh, agreed with the board to use the remaining proceeds to create a long-term investment fund for the CII. Both these actions are aimed at strengthening our business for the future. Lastly, I want to thank our president, Jonathan Clark, our board and committees for all their work and support in 2018. And big thanks to Nick for standing in to chair the AGM today. But in case you think it's all current facts and figures and no future thinking, we have two focused strategy sessions a year with our board. Uh, their input on wide ranging subjects, climate change and the protection gap, advances in machine learning and vulnerable consumers, technology and emerging economies, all completely vital to us. But there was, I have to admit, one prediction from all of this that haunts me. Let's pray not. Uh, so I just wanted to end by saying thank you all for listening. Uh, and more importantly, particularly all of you who are involved with the local institutes, really caring, as you must do, about the CII and its futures. I hope you enjoy the annual report, and please don't forget to visit our online site. And why do I say all these things? Because as I always finish by saying, it's not my CII, it's your CII. Um, we genuinely want it to feel like that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your report, Sean. Um, we now open up the floor to any questions. Please raise your hand if you have any questions that you'd like answered. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Fair enough, no questions, that, that's brilliant. Um, we've now reached the end of today's formal CI business, and I'll now hand you back over to Sean. Uh, so we just wanted to say that before you all, all head for the exits, uh, we would very much like you to attend and have a little celebration with us uh, for the uh, presidential transfer of office. Uh, so in a minute, uh, we would love to join you uh, just outside on my right. Thank you. So thank you, Sean. I now declare this meeting closed and would like to thank you all, every one of you, for attending. Thank you. <laughs>